Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be answering a relatively interesting question of biology. Does anything actually eat viruses as a predominant source of nutrition? In other words, is there anything out there that actually survives on eating viruses? And though it might not sound like a very important question, it is quite important for a lot of different reasons, and actually does provide solutions to potential mysteries. So here's one mystery. If nothing out there ate viruses, or if nothing else was destroying them to some extent, at some point all of the viruses in the ocean would actually destroy every single cell, leaving practically nothing behind. For example, we know that bacteriophages that sort of look like this are actually extremely efficient at destroying a lot of bacteria. They usually invade the cell and use its own machinery to then produce even more bacteriophages, which then reproduce, creating even more copies, with each capable of doing the same to other bacterial cells as well. And so with time, technically, these bacteriophages can actually destroy all of the bacteria in the oceans, assuming that nothing is there to stop them. Yet we know that this is not what happens. There are quite a lot of bacteria out there, and something is definitely responsible for destroying viruses, or for at least causing viruses to destroy less bacteria. That's of course one of the mysteries. Other, more simpler mysteries are just in regards to viruses as a source of nutrition. For example, going back to the bacteriophage here, Technically, this is a really efficient source of a lot of stuff. There are a lot of amino acids, nucleic acids, lipids, nitrogen, phosphorus, with all of this extremely efficiently assembled and basically ready to eat right away. And based on what life does usually and how it's able to adapt to anything and consume anything that's extremely efficient in nutrition, it's only logical to assume that there's gotta be something out there that eats viruses as well. Yet up until this point, these organisms have never been identified. There are lots of organisms eating bacteria, there are also bacteria eating other bacteria, and all sorts of interaction that's been observed on a microscopic level, but viruses for some reason more or less remain sort of untouched. So does this make them the top of the actual food chain? Or is there something out there that does use viruses as a primary food source? Well, the answer to that question is yes, there is something that was recently discovered. But actually, even before that, there is a video from a couple of years ago that actually explored another organism that was actually discovered to use viruses at least to some extent. It wasn't really eating them as a primary source, but it didn't mind occasionally eating viruses as well. And that was an important first step because, using a somewhat similar technique, the scientists have now officially identified the first ever known bacterium that basically chooses to eat viruses and gets most of the nutrition from them as well. And this concept now has a name. It's known as the virovore. Sort of like an omnivore, carnivore, in this case, something that eats viruses, a virovore organism. But based on this recent study, only one such organism has so far been identified, and it only seems to eat one type of a virus, or at least one known for now. And this tiny organism is known as Halteria, something that was originally found back in the 17th century. And Halteria is what's known as a protist, essentially a complex cell that's not an animal, not a fungi, not a plant, but does possess a lot of complexity on the inside, including organelles and a nucleus. And this organism also possesses what's known as cilia, tiny hair-like protrusions that it uses to move around and to potentially also grab various food particles. And normally these exist pretty much in every major body of water. In this case, the actual samples were collected from some sort of a pond. Here's a slightly more detailed picture of what halteria might look like if seen in a microscope. And so by taking a sample from a pond, they then added a pretty common virus known as the chlorovirus, that sort of resembles something like this, into the sample itself. And generally chloroviruses tend to infect certain types of plankton or certain types of single cell organisms, eventually leading to their destruction and obviously a dramatic increase in viruses. And so here it was expected that this virus will eventually proliferate and destroy pretty much everything on the inside. But the scientists had this curious question, is anything going to survive? Or better even, is anything going to thrive? Because by finding something that thrives here, it can then be sort of determined if this organism is thriving because it's actually eating the viruses. And there were a couple of discoveries. One of them was an extremely common organism known as paramecium that was seen to have survived and seemed to have consumed some of the viruses, potentially using them as a kind of a snack. And this is somewhat similar to the discovery from a few years ago that discovered another protist capable of doing something similar. And this of course implies that there are quite a lot of different single cell organisms that might have actually evolved to potentially use viruses at least to some extent as a potential source of additional nutrition, especially when conditions are not very friendly. But there was a much more important discovery from this study 
in regards to Halteria. Even though everything else disappeared, these little guys grew in numbers by approximately 15 times in just two days, while at the same time the number of viruses dropped dramatically, which of course at first implied only one thing. These viruses were being eaten by Halteria, and they were using them as a primary source of nutrition. Moreover, according to the scientists, they even grew quite dramatically in size, and certain DNA fragments from the virus were then seen inside Halteria using the fluorescent green dye. You can sort of see it right here as the tiny green spots. But more importantly, they were mostly concentrated inside the feeding vacuoles, or basically kind of like the tiny stomachs where the nutrition was stored. Which really only meant one thing, they were definitely eating the viruses and they were definitely growing and multiplying because of it. Making this the only such organism known to us as of 2023. Which means that Halteria and Chlorovirus have a very unusual predator versus prey relationship that's never been seen before. And although many different organisms were discovered to occasionally eat viruses, so far this is the only one that seems to prefer them. Although finally enough, the actual entrance for a virivore on Wikipedia is still extremely short. This is the only such discovery. But more importantly, there was also an additional discovery on top of this that to some extent affects the modern understanding of what's known as the carbon cycle. Chloroviruses, as the name suggests, prefer to infect various green algae, or basically algae responsible for producing huge amounts of oxygen on the planet, but also obviously fixating a lot of carbon dioxide. And so green algae in this case represents one of the biggest carbon sinks in the oceans and is directly responsible for producing oxygen but also fixating CO2. More green algae, more oxygen, less CO2. But the presence of these viruses destroys the green algae and thus has the potential to suddenly release a lot of CO2 into the oceans and also obviously lower the oxygen production. And so even though this was just a tiny sample, in reality this represents a huge amount of biomass with the potential of releasing huge amounts of carbon or vice versa, potentially storing a lot of carbon. But this is where Halteria comes into the picture as well. It definitively plays a role of a kind of a regulator by essentially destroying chloroviruses and allowing more algae to exist. And so at least in theory, it might have a huge effect on the carbon cycle on the planet, but may also explain a lot of other phenomena we don't understand, such as for example the occasional algae bloom that tends to dramatically increase the production of algae for reasons still not understood. So basically these little guys definitely play a role of regulators of the release of oxygen and the fixation of CO2, but what effect all of this has on the planet is still obviously not known. It probably has some other effects on the food chain in the oceans and the release of a lot of other nutrients from for example algae itself, but before the scientists can discover any of this, they first have to confirm that this is exactly what happens in the wild as well. They basically have to observe this in the actual pond or, for example, some kind of an ocean. At the moment, all of this was just done in a lab and in very artificial conditions. So we don't really know if this is how it works out there in nature as well. And so this is definitely a pretty exciting discovery. Although just to clarify, they don't just eat viruses, they also do eat other bacteria, so these are kind of like predators of a typical pond or a typical ocean. But the fact that they seem to prefer these chloroviruses is a really important discovery in helping us understand what happens on a microscopic scale when it comes to the carbon cycle. And so chances are we're going to be talking about this organism again sometime in the future. But until the future discoveries, that's pretty much it. You can find the study and all of the relevant links in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.